economy update relative to the business cycle model and relative to an indicator uh, called the PMI that's uh, published uh, once a month. I'm Rich Pawson for Critical Point. It's December 1st, 2020, 2021, 2021. All right, what we have, this is an annual chart of that monthly PMI number. And what we're doing is we're saying uh, we really want to basically know the lowest value per year, the highest value per year, and then uh, what's the start of the year and the end of the year. And what does this mean long term? And as you can see, this was the recession caused by the pandemic slammed down. And what a rule we have is a recession should not occur unless the nine-year macroeconomic cycle or otherwise known as the juggler business cycle is due to turn down, is due for a bottom or a low, okay? And that normally signals we're going to get a recession, the economy is going to contract, fall into a recession. If this PMI is under 50 and it's not time for that pullback, for that bottom, then we view it with suspicion that it's just the economy throttling back a little bit more than maybe we would like. And if the stock market is reacting to that, though, it may be a buy the dip moment in the stock market that the indicator will probably uh, recover. But if it is time for that downturn, then we have to be nervous that we're starting bear market in the stock market, that we're starting economic contraction, and when it gets down to around 45 or lower, we assume the economy is in recession. And so far, these rules have worked throughout the history of this country. I've back tested this as far back as I could go uh, beyond PMI, finding GDP, and then sometimes even beyond GDP of just trying to put things together to give us a clue of the economy. So we correctly called for a recession about the time of the pandemic. Didn't realize a virus was going to cause that recession, but we knew something would go wrong. And that's the beauty of this kind of modeling, unlike what economists are dealing with, is we can come up with time frames that something's going to go wrong for the economy we know about when. We may not know the story right to the detail, and I suggest there's no precision in anyone trying to come up with that story. But yes, it's worthwhile trying to figure it out. But at least we can use this at the very least as background. You may even want it foreground, meaning it's the most important kind of information you need. So where are we today? Well, the model is saying the economy should grow to near the end of the decade. But as we go back and look at what occurred for the PMI, normally the PMI exploded up out of recession, and it's done it once again. History repeated once again. Then the PMI should slowly erode back to 50 and someday drop below 50. But again, probably no recession unless it's below 50 and it's time to have a recession. Then the PMI drops further and everybody panics, we're in a recession, okay? So the bottom line is, don't be surprised if this PMI now starts working its way lower all the way in the end of this decade. And don't be surprised it's slower to lower unemployment and increase employment, but it will continue to be on the downside of unemployment, upside of employment right into the end of the decade. The economy will grow no matter what. I'm not finding any evidence that we're going to get some kind of shocking move that this won't work for the first time ever in the history of this country. It's going to take an asteroid striking the world to disrupt this economy. This tells us then to be cautious when people are scared to death of the Federal Reserve doing something. They're scared to death of money printing. They're scared to death of inflation. Okay. It just goes on and on and on, and I've seen this decade of de decade in my own life, within my own career, and with my own investing in the stock market and dealing with this indicator. Okay, most of that news is going to sound, or some of that news is going to sound really scary, but you're going to find all it does is knock the stock market down for a while and it goes right back up. You're going to find the economy maybe throttles back a little bit, and it's just going to go right back to net growth. It takes a certain amount of time to get everything accomplished in growing economy where we can't grow it any further. And then we either cause the setback into the recession and become fearful and make it even worse, 
or the system breaks down, and then we become fearful and make it worse. There's many combinations, and that's a problem with fundamentals and economics, many different combinations of variables, and then the variables can run high volatility, making it very difficult. That's why I teach people in the stock market, standard or S fundamentals economics only explains 50% of price fluctuation. You got to dig deeper more into what the people are doing and what they want to do, and there's a big difference between that. Many people in the market say one thing and they do something else. And you really need that to get a handle on another type of demand that those standard fundamentals and economics miss entirely sometimes. Any rate, this indicator, what's it telling us today? So far for, for November, it went to 61.8 versus October 60.8. That means the economy sped higher, okay, sped up in terms of how fast it's growing. And you can see it's near historical highs. Do we get way out into the wild 1960s, 1970s inflation times? Okay, it's telling us its economy is growing about as fast as it can grow. Things are good. Life is wonderful. But this indicator is going to erode lower sometimes. So to make sure that I, that doesn't deceive me, I came up with this indicator. And all it says is if the PMI is above 50, add it to the prior month. If the PMI is at 50, do nothing. If the PMI is below 50, subtract it from the prior month. And what it does is it filters out a lot of fluctuation during the year. It even filters out some of that year-to-year -year fluctuation I just showed you in that chart. What it's showing is the most important business cycle, I think. There's smaller ones. There's ones even larger, such as super cycles. But I think this one that occurs about once a decade means a lot to your career, your job, your business, and your investments. Perhaps even your sanity of dealing with all those things. Okay, Recession. Economic growth as it should have been. Pulled back into a recession as it should have. Lengthier expansion. Growth. Lasted about the longest allowed. Pulled back into a recession. Okay, And now record high. This runs a very high correlation to GDP, not the percent GDP, but GDP, nominal GDP, real GDP. All it's suggesting right now with that high correlation is the economy is already record large. If you want to put a dollar value on it, the U.S. economy, therefore the U.S. people are worth more than ever. Things are good, okay? And this indicator, even though it may run into little uh, hurdles here, and throttling back an economy at times. And mid-decade, we may get a secondary recession, which is what happened in this 2015-2016 time frame. But it was only for commodities and manufacturing. It was for some countries, a little bit for the world. And the U.S. just shrugged it off. It didn't even make headlines. A lot of people missed it entirely. Economists missed it entirely. Didn't matter enough. It was not a national recession. We may see something like that again around mid-decade when I think real estate might back off. Uh, we can have commodities backing off. Inflation might be dead in the news cycle. Okay, And then, every, then they may come back a bit too. But by and large, the economy's probably not going to look back. And it's just going to keep growing to near the end of this decade when we will get another uh, sell signal. And we've studied this pattern Going back many decades, all the major recessions here, major growths. And you can see we had problems in, this, uh, in the uh, 80s, okay, even going to 90s. A lot more fluctuation during the growth period. And today, we're kind of like getting really good at growing the economy and keeping it really stable, really steady. But the bottom line is history will probably repeat at the end of this decade. And we'll have another recession and a related bear market in the stock market. It really does boil down to you and I create this, not the Federal Reserve, not the government, not all the political nonsense and talk and rhetoric they're always doing. Those things or those people can only add to or take away from this. You and I create this and make it. And it is a warning towards the end of this decade. For some reason, we're going to stop investing, spending. Uh, prices might be too high. We don't want to build new businesses. We don't want to borrow anymore. But there may be outside factors. And now we got a lesson for the first time, perhaps, in the history of this country that we can have an outside factor called a virus that can actually hurt our economy. So we got new things 
on that very wide, broad, standard fundamental economic list to also watch out for. But people, in my mind, are the number one thing driving this particular business cycle. I'm Rich Positive for Critical Point. Thank you. Past results are not, not necessarily indicative of future results.